We believe in the inspiration of Scripture. We believe in the Bible and take a grammatical, historical, literal interpretation of the Bible, uh, believing that uh, God has inspired His Word and given us a text uh, to derive doctrine and truth from. And it was given to us because it can be understood. Now look, most people today, if you talk to most people, I don't care who it is, they're going to give lip service to everyone believes in the inspiration of Scripture in the originals, right? And the Bible talks about this. 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Peter 1.21 says this, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Most people believe in the, in the inspiration of Scripture in the originals. You know, how are we different? Well, number four, we also believe in the preservation of Scripture. I believe that God preserved His Word unto all generations, so it doesn't make any sense that the true Word of God would be buried for thousands of years. So I reject all of these new modern archaeological findings because why would the true Word of God just disappear off the face of the earth? Why would we have to go dig it up and look for it? We've always had it. It's been passed down, copy of a copy of a copy. That's what we preach, that's what we believe, it's what we've had our whole lives and before us and before that and before that. So that's why it's called the received text because it's what, that which we've received, that which has been passed down, the traditional text versus a new text that is relying upon something that was just dug up out of the earth. The received text is basically what churches have received as being God's word over time. And they're the, the, the texts that have been, you know, also lines up the most with the majority text. Psalm 12, Verse 6 says this, the words of the Lord are pure words. That's inspiration. They're pure. They're holy. They're God's words. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7 says this, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. See, we as Baptists not only believe in the inspiration of Scripture. Look, everybody says they believe in the inspiration of the originals. No, whoever you talk to will tell you they believe in the inspiration. But you know what we also believe in? We believe in the preservation of Scripture. Amen. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So people tell you today, oh yeah, the originals were inspired, but we've lost the Word of God because the translators messed it all up. Now, wait a minute. It's God who preserves the Word of God. King James Bible in the English speaking world is the Word of God for us today. Today, even those who believe that we have the preserved Word of God in the English language in our King James Bible will sometimes want to split hairs and argue about whether we have the inspired words or the preserved words. But what they don't understand is that if God preserved His inspired words, then we hold in our hands the inspired and preserved Word of God. Inspired means they were spoken by God, that He spoke them. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Did we preserve the words that God inspired? Then look, I've got the inspired and preserved Word of God right now then. If we believe in the preservation of Scripture, which we do. Psalm 119, 89 says this, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Isaiah 40 and verse 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. See, as Baptists, we believe in the preservation of Scripture. By the way, in the English language, that's the King James Bible. 